All right, so in this video, we're going to introduce completing the square, and we're going to do it with a little bit of logic and algebra. So let's start with the logic. Let's say you take a number like 4. If you square 4, you get 16, and 16 is a perfect square. Why is 16 a perfect square? Well, you know that you can take the square root of 16 and get a wonderful whole number like 4. And this is the basic logic that drives completing the square. It's the idea that if you take a number and you square it, what you're doing essentially is making a perfect square. Since the square root of a number squared is just the number itself. right? It brings you right back to it. Just like squaring 4 gave us 16, and then taking the square root of 16 brought us back to 4. It's this process that also is happening when we're completing the square. It doesn't look as friendly, but that's the same idea. So we're not going to start with 4, but we start with something like x plus um, a, and we square it. Let's look at what a perfect square looks like with this. Well, this means take x plus a and multiply it by x plus a. And this is something we should know in terms of distributive property, but if you don't, it's okay. We take this term and multiply it by these two. So x times x is x squared. x times a is, well, it's a times x or x times a, we don't know. And then we take this term and multiply it by these two. So a times x is, again, another ax. And a times a is a squared. So now we can simplify a little bit, right? Because here we have ax and ax. Add those two up, we get 2ax, right? It's like having two axes. And then we have a squared and an x squared over here. So essentially, what we know is, we start with this and square it, we get this. So in a quadratic, right, this is what a perfect square looks like. And that doesn't seem as nice, but that's what it is. It's based on this idea right here. And we can also look at it from another approach. Um, here we had x plus a, and a could be negative or positive, but let's just look at how this would pan out for something like x minus a. What would a perfect square look like then? Well, if we square this, this means x minus a, right, times x minus a. Same process now. Take the first term, multiply it by x, so it's x squared. x times negative a is minus a, x. And then we distribute the next term here. a times x, sorry, negative a times x is minus ax. And minus a times minus a is plus a squared. We can combine these two, we get minus 2ax, right, plus a squared, and that's x squared right there. So this is what, a per this is also, I'm sorry, what a perfect square could look like with quadratics. So keeping that in mind, we now have everything we need to do in order to complete the square. Let's start with a simple example. What they might give you is something, you know, I mean, you want to start with something easy and positive. So x squared plus 4x. So they might say, how could you rewrite this as a perfect square? And that might be all they ask in the beginning. We'll, we'll get to another video about how to solve this quadratic. But here, just rewrite this in either this form or this form right here. Well, how do we do that? Notice that the form is x squared, right, plus 2ax plus a squared. What does that mean? Well, that means that this number right here, this 4, equals what? Well, we're adding here, and that's 2a. Notice that 2a is being multiplied by x. So this 4 is actually 2a. Okay, so we've got part of the perfect square, but we need to also add in a squared. So how do we do that? Well, let's, let's solve this, right? Because 2a, we're saying that 2a is 4, or 2a equals 4. So then what does a equal? Well, a is going to equal 4 divided by 2, right? Because 2 times a is 4, so 4 divided by 2 is a. It's just an inverse operation. And then in this case, a is 2, but we need to add in a squared. So here we would add, well, a is 2, 2 squared is 4. Well, now we have a, a perfect square, right? Because this can simply be factored out to what? Well, x plus, if we were 
backwards here, we know this is a squared, and originally we started with x plus a, so this could be rewritten as x plus 2 squared. And we can test that out, that would be x plus 2 times x plus 2, distribute x times x is x squared, x times 2 is 2x, 2 times x, another 2x, that's 4x, and then 2 times 2 is 4. So yeah, this is right uh, a condensed form of this perfect square right here. So we create a perfect square. And I think the key is this process right here is often where the formula is coming that you're given on how to turn a number into a perfect square. So what we did really, right, we took 2a and then we divided it by 2 to get a, and then we squared it. And that's how we got this term right here. And that's, I think, often what you're told. You might be given something looking a little bit different, right? Let's just rewrite what you're usually given. You might see x squared plus bx, and they say, oh, to complete the square, what you do is you take b, you divide it by 2, right? And then you square that, and then you rewrite this new equation. You have x squared plus bx plus b over 2 squared. And now all that, I mean, that's just coming from, I mean, it looks nasty, but that's just coming from what we just did. We said a perfect square looks like this. x squared plus, right, 2ax plus a squared. And, and you don't have to memorize that. Just take x plus a and square it, and you'll see that you get this. Okay, well, we knew that to get from 2a to a squared, you have to solve, right? You have to say, okay, so 2a equals some number, right? Let's say b, okay? In the last case, it was 4, whatever. And then a has to equal what? Well, a is always going to equal b over 2, because we're just going to divide by this 2. But then we know this last term is, is, is a squared. Well, here, look at this, a equals b over 2, and then a squared has to equal b over 2 squared. And that connects to this formula right here. These are just different ways of saying the same thing, right? This is a simplification of the process that we're describing here. There's no need to memorize it, right? You can just work it out. If you knew that this is what a perfect square looked like, you'd know that whatever number is in this spot right here, represents 2a. So before it was 4 equals 2a. And then we had to get a squared to complete the square. To do that, you solve for a and then square it. And again, just to do that, we 2 times a is 4. So a equals 4 divided by 2. So we always divide by 2 because we always have 2a here. So to get the, the, the a term, we're always going to divide by 2, as we're showing here. And then we square it. And that's the basic process. So in a simple term, right, a simple way of looking at this is to take whatever is here, divide by 2, whatever number you have, divide by 2, and then square it, and add that in, and you'll always complete the square. I just wanted to show you a little bit of, of, of why that makes sense. Now, now this, might not, this might be too much right now. You might feel overwhelmed. Let me work out two more examples, and I think that might clear, clear things up. Okay, so let's try an example where we're subtracting, or we have a negative. So let's try x squared minus 28x. So remember, the perfect square formula is to say that you have x squared plus 2ax plus a squared. And we have to get from 2a to a squared. So how do we do that? Well, what's, what does 2a equal in this case? Well, 2a equals negative 28. And then we have to solve for a to get a squared. So divide both sides by 2, right? Negative 28 divided by 2 equals negative 14. And then a squared just equals negative 14 squared. And that is positive 196. So to complete the square in this case, we just get x squared, right, minus 28x, and then plus 196. And, and this is so nice because it can be factored very nicely into x, right, minus 14 squared. And that just equals x minus 14, right, times x minus 14. And here, x times x is x squared. x times negative 14 is negative 14x. Negative 14 times x is another negative 14x. Add those up, we get negative 28x. And then negative 14 times negative 14 is positive 196. 
And I knew, I knew I needed the negative sign here because, well, once you have that negative value in your quadratic, you'll need it, right? You'll need the negative sign here. And also a justification for it is if you remember, we started by saying, well, x, x plus a squared gives us this formula right here. But here with the square root of a to get back, the square root of a squared to get back to a, we have the square root of 196. That can go two ways. You can get a positive 14 or a negative 14. Here I'm choosing a negative 14, and that works out nicely for me in this equation. It helps me complete the square. And now another perspective here, you might look at this formula and say, oh, well, I'm told that x squared plus bx, right, plus b over 2 squared is how I complete the square. Well, we're doing that here. It's the same thing. Here they're just writing b as 2a and simplifying it that way. And a squared is equal to b over 2 squared. That is the same thing. So either way, we're okay, but with this formula, you, you would say from the start that b equals negative 28, right? Uh, and that to solve for this part, we take b, or negative 28, divided by 2, which is negative 14, and then square that. And that gives us 196, and that's, that's exactly what we did here, except we're just thinking of it more logically step by step here. And this, this formula is quicker, although it... I think it really reveals less of what's happening. All right, well, anyway, that's just an introduction to completing the square. I hope it helped.